What's up guys and welcome to another Nerdgasm Indie Blast with me Bobby. Today we have the Outlaws bundle. In this bundle there is four awesome great games that we're going to be covering. Now I've changed up the, the format of these videos a little bit because I felt the other ones were a little bit lacklustre in places so I hope you enjoy it. But once again feel free to click on the annotations on your screen now. But most importantly enjoy the videos and please leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I would really appreciate it. So, let's have a look at our first game, which is Post-Apocalyptic Mayhem. Now, as I said in the start of the video, I have changed up the format of these videos a little bit. I thought with the live commentary while playing the games, I got a bit distracted. I found it a little bit difficult to get the information across while actually doing good in the games and showing you guys what the games are about, because that's the point you're watching this video, is not me failing. So, I thought this way I get the information across better, while also showing you the game in the background and me failing quite a bit. So, with that said, let's let's crack on with the first game, which is Post-Apocalyptic Mayhem. It was first released on March 17th, 2011, for PC, and the developer is Steel Monkeys, and the publisher is, I do apologise for the pronunciation of this, it is Merindian 4 Incorporated, I think that's right. But anyway, it's described as an action-driving racing game, which is the genre. And I would totally agree with this. The best way I'd describe this game is a grown-up Mario. Because it's really, it's got the same kind of concept as Mario. You pick up power-ups and you destroy people. But obviously in a grown-up setting and in a grown-up way. I think that's the best way to describe it. But uh, as you're seeing on the video now, I'm picking up these colored barrels. Now, the cool thing about this game is each car that you drive has different powers at different parts in, on your car. So you've got like a front weapon, a side weapon, a backwards weapon, and then your boost. The greens always boost. Actually no, they're always the same colour but the green is a boost. Uh, the B, the red ones, are the back weapons. The X, or the blue barrels, are the side weapons. And the Y, which are the yellow barrels, is the front weapon. Now, as I said, each car has different weapons that you use. Just then, this car I'm in now is called the Arc Alchemist, and I shoot shot loads of weird, gooey stuff right in front of me to kill. Now, I should say, with this this game, it says it's driving and it's racing, which it is, but it's not all about finishing first. It sounds a little bit weird, doesn't it? But bear with me, it is quite an interesting concept. The idea to win, you either have to you have to balance the way you're you're doing things. You have to complete laps, and you need to get kills. So you need to juggle it as in, do I stay in front and try and get as many laps as possible, but then someone who gets 20 kills might beat me overall. That's the weird thing. So you kind of need to say, let's stay in the middle of the pack. This is the best way I found it. Let's stay in the middle of the pack, get a few, the same amount of laps as everyone, maybe a little less than the leader, but try and get as many kills as possible, which I might add is extraordinarily fun. Especially in the smaller cars, like right now, you can just like dash in front of them, use the red barrels, throw some mines behind you, and boom, you feel awesome just like killing everyone behind you. It's pretty damn sweet. Now, this game does have a single player and a multiplayer, so it feels even better when you're just owning and pwning some some people over overseas or whatever. Just online is awesome. But... I was being a little bit cheeky talking about tactics just then, I stopped, turned around and used my front weapon to instant kill someone, which is a little bit cheeky but I felt a bit pro doing it because it's a bit unexpected. You'd think in racing games, just race, try and hit first, but no, I actually a few times I stopped, turned around to catch catch the, the computer off guard, which, which I found quite fun. Now, overall... There is there is a huge list of vehicles. You have the Lodger, the Space Cowboy, the Nitro Genius, the Scorch, the Childhood Dreams, the Meth Alchemist, and there is a few DLC packs which include Kitty with Claws, which sounds pretty sweet, the Nucleoid, the Veteran, Ice Cream, Fuzz, and Tower, which is pretty sweet. It's not too bad. And uh, as I say, each each car does have different weapons. I mean, right now. I mean this massive truck, I've got like pincers at the front, machine guns at the side, and I drop some, dry, I'm not too sure what this car drops, but drop some death on the people below, which is 
which is always fun. Now, on the map I'm on now, uh, if you listen, you can hear like a Christmas themed dubstep type thing, so I thought that was pretty cool, just like having themed maps that, because post-apocalyptic mayhem, most of the maps are like dead, destroyed, just grimy and everything, but I thought this particular one was a nice, a nice break from it all. It was pretty sweet. Now, one thing that I thought was pretty cool when playing this is when using backwards weapons, the red barrels, you get a little window come up in the top left, you've probably seen it by now, that you can actually see where your your weapons are going, etc. So it gives you an idea of how much destruction you're doing, so you're always seeing it. Now, I had to do this. There is so much death in this game. So much death. Crazy amounts of death. It's quite funny just watching how often you die. I mean, I played this game for about two to three hours, and yeah, I, I, I died a lot. I died a lot. But the way you die is mostly quite funny. I mean, just then, uh, I got blown up. Now, blown up by ice cream balls, which I thought was pretty damn sweet. That's post-apocalyptic mayhem in the Outlaws bundle. Go pick it up, it's great fun. So, our next game in the Outlaws bundle is a game called Pacific Storm. Now, the developer of this game was Leicester Studio, the publishers were Booker Entertainment CDV, and the platform was War on PC, Microsoft Windows. And it was released on September 28th, 2006. Now, I'd like to first say that I'm not a st strategic strategy player. I don't really enjoy them. I mean, a bit of StarCraft 2 every now and then, maybe a bit of WarCraft 3, yes. But this game takes it to the extreme with strategy. It's, it's, it's mind-bogglingly just crazy. In, in respect, just right, right now there's so many menus, I mean if you like strategy games and you like your your World War World War 2 strategy games or just World War War games, then you'll probably love this game, but I found it really difficult to get into, it was a bit complicated, it's just like, this is, the tutorial was really slow and quite clunky, just moving around the map was a little bit difficult, I mean it was defaulted page up and down to get your camera in the right position it just it just felt it didn't felt clean or slick so it really didn't encourage me to play more of the game i mean one nice thing in the game i will say this uh, which we'll see in a second is that when you send your units to go fight it takes you into a different screen you can either go quick battle where the computer does it for you or you can actually go in and move your units around the battlefield and how you want to for format them, formation them, that's really bad English, but oh well, into to the battle, so you might do better than the auto battles, for example. So, yeah, I, again, I'm not really a strategic person, so I couldn't really get into the game. However, one thing that I did find interesting doing a bit of research was IGN gave this game a rating of 8.0 out of 10, and... I've never been a huge fan of these ratings because they don't give you enough detail. It's just like, here's a number, go buy the game on just this number, which I think is is ridiculous, it's stupid. And this goes in examples, I would, I would never give this game an 8. I mean, maybe a strategic lover game, game lover in IGN was rating this game and he, and he or she bloody loved it, but... Just the quality of the game, the animations, the the interface, the in oh, the interface, and how everything's so clunky and just thrown at you in heaps and heaps of text. I wouldn't personally give this an eight. If I was going to give this a number, I would first of all I'd set aside that I don't like strategy games and take it on face value and how it how it presents the information to you. I'd give it like maybe a three or something, but as I say, if you are a strategy game lover, then this game might be just for you, because 
the games do go on for a while, or I can imagine they're going on for a while, because in each place that you take over, or part of the ocean that you take over, you you have huge lists of what do you want to build here, what units do you want to build, how do you want to place these units in defences, and stuff like that, and it just gets so complicated, it's mind-boggling complicated, and I'm not exactly the brightest person, so I failed miserably. I mean, just then, I got kind of bored, just waiting around, not knowing what I was doing, so I just got my two ships, and went, screw it. I'm going to go attack Japan. And you saw the two lists. Like I had the two units. Japan had 20 or something ridiculous. So I was like, balls to the wall. I'm going for this. Just like, my nuts are huge. Let's do this. I knew I wasn't going to gonna win or anything. But I wanted to see if there was anything more this game could offer. Like how did the battles go? And I'll be honest. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I mean, this is the, the action thing. So you can... See, who do you want to hit? Where your units are? Should I position them correctly? Do I want to move them forward, backwards? Do I want to flank them? All that fun stuff. Which, I can imagine if you've got huge armies and you're actually clever, unlike me, on both fronts, didn't have a huge army and neither clever, then this game could show promise. However, I, I wasn't willing, I, I wasn't feeling encouraged to play the game even more. It wasn't exactly gripping me from the start. As I said, it's, there is a tutorial and it's very slow, clunky, etc. But... Uh, it's just this game... I, I don't know what it's, what it's about. It just didn't seem visually visually aesthetic. I mean, you've got games like StarCraft 2 and Warcraft 3, for example. And they're clean, they're cut, they, they're not as in depth as this game but still it even the interface it just felt nicer you knew your way around it you didn't have to spend hours knowing what each button did I mean I was trying to exit the game and I couldn't find the menu button I was like escape button wasn't working I was like what let me leave let me leave the game I'm done I'm done I'm just no my, my balls are, I died then obviously my balls weren't big enough but I just I, I didn't like it I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it, but I don't want to put you off it. You might be a strategy game lover, give it a go, it is part of the bundle, so, yeah, why not? Give it a few ten minutes, see if you like it. But that is Pacific Storm by Leicester Studio, published by Booker Entertainment. So let's have a look at our next games in the Outlaws bundle, which are RIP 1, 2 and 3. Now, don't get confused, these are three separate games, so technically... Technically, you are getting seven games in the bundle. However, because this is a trilogy and all the games are very similar, then that you might as well class it as four. You won't sink hours and hours into this game. It is an arcade game. And I didn't know this when I was playing it, but apparently it's a classic arcade game that they've brought back, which is pretty cool. So maybe you played this when you were a kid and you want a bit of nostalgia feeling, then you might enjoy this more than, more than I did. I mean, the game in the background at the moment is R.I.P. 1, and you play as a stationary turret thing, shooting hordes and hordes of zombies. So, classic arcade game, just survive as long as you can, etc. Try not to die, high score wins kind of thing, which, which is fun for a little bit. If you've got like 10 minutes to kill, it, it's alright, but it's, it's not the best arcade game in the world. I, I've played better games that have the same idea of this. I mean, it's a bit of a petty fault that I found with it, but the voice acting really annoyed me. I don't no voice acting has really annoyed me in an arcade game, but th this one did. I mean, you pick a portrait type character that you you lead or players and I picked death one of course <laughs> you're playing a game killing loads of people you might as well have a portrait of death and he kept on saying the same couple of lines every few seconds and I was I was playing it I was like please shut up just, just let me play you're kind of annoying me but anyway this is R.O.P. 3 now straight away I'm not moving 
which gives it a more sense of strategy and skill because then you're, you're kiting a few enemies. For those people you don't know, kiting means just leading them on so they can't get to you while shooting them, so they can't kill you but you kill them pretty easily. So it's it's usually kite melee people. It's a bit of game lingo for, for any of you who didn't know. But anyway. Uh I instantly liked RIP RIP three more than RIP one because again the moving and the interface was a lot more slicker. There was more variety of enemies. I mean right now I'm fighting like a mini boss. Um which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Uh he's not they're not exactly difficult but they're not just aimlessly running at you they are like moving about in a semi-logical fashion so it makes it a little bit more difficult which which I enjoyed now each of the three games does have an experience and upgrade system in RIP 1 you would get to upgrade like shields and armor in this one it's a little bit more in-depth the skill tree was a little bit more vast and you could expand your character in more interesting ways which I found pretty, pretty cool. I always went for the power. Power being you kill more things faster. I mean, I always go for that. I'm just like, I don't want shields. I don't want armor. don't want health. Just make me a glass cannon. I want to one-shot some things, which is, which is always fun. Now, in this game, there are a variety of weapons. At the moment, I have two. And the one I'm using now is a plasma weapon. Now, each weapon has two firing types. You've got the left click and right click. In this particular weapon, the left click is like a machine gun type thing, right, right now. And the right click is you fire a bolt, it travels, when it hits something it explodes into several other little bolts. So, you can use that to your advantage if you've got like a nice group of enemies, shoot at them, you kill them all from the inside type thing. Which is pretty cool. And then later on I pick up, I picked up a, a rocket launcher and the secondary a attack thing, firing mechanism. English, probably English. Uh, firing mechanism was firing loads of mines and them staying there. So I had two enemies coming from opposite directions. I blocked up a path with mines from one direction, then fired rockets at the other direction. So an interesting use of tactics with different guns, which is which is pretty cool. I mean, the shotguns you've got like left click is just normal, normal burst, narrow-ish burst, and then the right click is a huge burst type thing so if you've got a huge line of enemies coming at you just right click boom they're all gone which is pretty cool now I have to talk about the interface a little bit in RIP 3 it is vastly better than RIP 1 I mean in the top right you've got the health of your enemies or how many enemies you've got remaining as you can see this guy does take a bit of a beating and then in the bottom left you've got your health your shields and the weapons that you have and in the bottom right you've got your ammo and in the top left you've got your timer so I felt they didn't have to bring in the timer but if you've got some friends and you want to see who's best then I suppose you can go on who does it fastest and doesn't die a lot which is pretty cool I'm kind of I was glad they put it in it was a little extra they didn't have to do it it, it does feel like a little arcade game that you spend 10 to 20 minutes on if you've got some spare time so it was pretty cool I mean right now I was fighting, I'm fighting a boss, or was fighting a boss, and <laughs> I didn't realise that the lasers one-shot you, and I didn't realise the lasers were part of his weapon, they didn't really show up as part of his weapon, but I cottoned onto it, and I soon, I soon owned his face, eventually. I suppose you can't say owned his face after you die multiple times, but anyway, then I realised that the lasers moved, and I was like, alright, all right, you got some tricks up your sleeve, that's pretty cool, but... It is a pretty good game to see 10 to 20 minutes in if you've got some free time, so and it's part of the bundle and money to go into charity, so it's all good. So let's have a look at our last game in the bundle, which is Robin Hood, The Legend of Sherwood. Now firstly, I must apologise, the recordings turned out really poorly. I don't know why, but they were stuttering and they made the game look, look like a buggy mess, which I really didn't want it to do to show that because it isn't it is a fairly decent game it's a good quality game the aesthetics and the animations are they're all right and the general art style of it is it's pretty cool it keeps in keeps in the theme with the robin hood type franchise and world and universe but 
I thought screenshots were the best alternative because it gives an idea of what the game is about ish uh, and gives you an idea of the aesthetics and the general feel of the game so without further ado the developers of this game are Strategy First and Spellbind Studios and the publishers are Mindscape, Freeverse Software and Wanadu fantastic name, I like that word Wanadu anyway, the platforms are for Mac Microsoft Windows and Linux and the release date was 2002. Now the developers describe this game as a stealth, bow, stealth based real time strategy video game which I would agree with. I was rubbish at the stealth aspect I kept on just running into enemies blindly and just getting slaughtered it wasn't the best feeling in the world however I do totally agree with the strategy element at one time you can control up to five people um, each do different things, but then you have to think about where you're going to position them, etc. etc. Now, the plot of this game is the game starts with Robin Hood arriving in Lincoln from the Crusades and finding out that his inheritance has been stolen by the notorious Sheriff of Nottingham. The then player starts to meet new characters and he soon understands that King Richard has been kidnapped by Leopold of Austria for a ransom and that the regent Prince John is unlawfully usurping the rightful king. The responsibility of getting the ransom of £100,000 to save the king falls into the player's hands. So, you've just got to raise money as best you can and save the king. Ta-da! Now, a cool little thing that I found out about this game is in every town the player can give money to beggars who can then provide you with hints and tips about how to raise money it's only a little thing but I thought that was pretty cool but anyway that is Robin Hood a little insight into what the game is about Legend of Sherwood (laughs) 